guys, so in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the books that I have been inspired to read lately. After the Women's March on DC earlier in January, I came across the perspective of a young Native American woman who went to the march in DC with some of her people and she described her experience there and how it wasn't as great as it seemed most white women were saying. And basically how her and her people were treated as objects and they had pictures taken of them or with them but then the people wouldn't listen to the issues that they were there to protest or support. And it just reminded me even more that it's our own responsibility to educate ourselves about the oppression and marginalization against people of color. It's not their job to educate us. And so inspired by this young woman's experience and my general goal to read more diversely, it kind of occurred to me that I haven't really been focusing very much on the immense mistreatment of Native Americans, which you know, as a person who lives in America, it's something that is a huge part of my country's history. And I think sometimes it doesn't quite get as much attention as other very worthy issues do, such as black history. So I want to include more Native American literature in my reading in the same way that I've been trying to include more black literature in my reading and other diverse groups. I do live nearby a reservation and yet I still feel very undereducated about the history of local tribes and other American tribes. So I went online to just research Native American authors because I felt that there had to be more than Sherman Alexie and Louise Erdrich and Joseph Boyden. So I just kind of wanted to share with you some of the books that I found that I've added to my to-read list that I'm hoping to get to, some of them at least, this year, if not the coming years, and just ongoing continuously. The first one is Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco. Ceremony is about the Pueblos. And according to Penguin, who just released a new edition of it, it was written almost 40 years ago. And Leslie Marmon Silco is one of the first key figures in the first wave of what some people call the Native American Renaissance. Another one that I've added is House Made of Dawn by Anne Scott Momaday. This book actually won a Pulitzer Prize, and it's about the struggle of living in two worlds, basically the traditional Native American world and the harsh 20th century American world. Another one is Fool's Crow by James Welch, which is set in Montana shortly after the Civil War. James Welch is a Blackfeet author and another key member in the Native American Renaissance. Next is Crazy Brave by Joy Harjo. Joy Harjo is a poet and this book is actually a memoir. Harjo was born in Oklahoma, which was the ending place of the Trail of Tears. So you just get to learn about her life growing up and her path to becoming a poet. Next is From the Deep Woods to Civilization by Charles Alexander Eastman. This is also a memoir and it covers a part of his life where he was the only doctor available at the massacre at Wounded Knee. Another one I've picked out is called Lakota Woman by Mary Crow Dog. This is another memoir about how she grew up in a one-room cabin with no running water or electricity on a reservation in South Dakota. So it follows her difficult upbringing and the rest of her life's path. Another one that I picked out is called Solar Storms, and that's by Linda Hogan. It tells the story of Angela Jensen, a Native American girl dealing with the foster system. And this book has a very similar story to what's happening right now with the Dakota Access Pipeline, because this is set in 
Oklahoma where an entrepreneur wants to build a hydroelectric dam and the project would result in sacred land being ruined and abandoned. According to the author's Goodreads profile, she is the current Chickasaw Nation's writer in residence. And another one is another book by Joy Harjo, and that is Reinventing the Enemy's Language, Contemporary Native Women's Writings of North America. So this is more an anthology edited by Joy Harjo, and it celebrates the experience of Native American women. And one well-known Native American woman is Zitkala Sa, and I had already added a book of writings by her, but I discovered that there was another edition that included more. This one is American Indian Stories, Legends, and Other Writings, which is a Penguin Classics edition. Zitkala Sa was raised on the Sioux Reservation and was educated at boarding schools that forced assimilation. So a lot of her writing and stories deal with that struggle. Another book is the autobiography of Wilma Mankiller, and I initially found out about her by reading Gloria Steinem's recent memoir, and Wilma Mankiller was the chief of the Cherokee Nation and a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So she recounts her own history and the history of the Cherokees. And the last book is actually a recommendation from the young woman on Twitter who partially as a joke recommended it to one of the Kardashians who was looking for a book to read. I took the recommendation for anyone who was interested and that is An Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. The book received the American Book Award in 2015 and is considered the first history of the United States from the perspective of indigenous peoples. So those are most of the books that I added in my recent to read adding spree and I really hope that I gain a lot from it and that I just come to a better understanding of the very complex history of Native Americans and white people in America. If you have any other recommendations or if there's anything that I'm obviously missing, then definitely let me know. If you have read any of these and liked them, then let me know that as well. I just kind of wanted to share this with you guys as part of my process and goal to read more diversely. And by making this video, I'm of course not trying to say that Native American struggles are a more important issue than like black history or immigration rights and all of that, but it's definitely one that is often overlooked more than any other racial issue in America. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.